Fear. It's the emotion that keeps us alive. Fear of heights, fear of predators, fear of the dark, and whatever made that sound. Fear is what keeps us safe by alerting us to danger. At least, that's what you probably think. But the truth is that fear doesn't know what's safe or dangerous. It doesn't know what's good or bad for you. It just is. Because what you fear isn't danger. What you fear is uncertainty. Let me explain. You see this woman standing in a dark room? Right now you're filled with uncertainty. Uncertain how the lights went out, uncertain what rustled the clothes, uncertain what lurks in the dark. But mostly, you're uncertain of whether I'm going to show you something scary. And it's all this uncertainty you're feeling right now that activates something called the threat reflex. The quickening of your heart rate, the rapid breathing, muscles tensing, the hyper-focus and awareness. This is the threat reflex, and when it happens, biology has programmed your brain to feel fear, even when you're not in danger. That's why you're afraid of a screen with moving pictures, or even afraid of your own memories when you know there's no actual threat to your life. You'd think this is just your personality coming through, but it's all a product of your conditioned fears. It's literally the reason you have favourite foods, or places, or activities. Because you know what to expect when you pick favourites. There's less fear of disappointment, there's less uncertainty. But what you don't realise is that every time you give in to those fears and you run from different experiences, or you choose the easier, more familiar option, you're unknowingly limiting your potential, because the only way you learn anything is by exploring uncertainty, what you don't know. So, let me show you how the fear system works and how the only difference between fear and excitement is a story you're telling yourself. Okay, let's go. This is your amygdala. It's a tiny almond shaped structure in the brain that helps process emotions like fear, anxiety, pleasure and reward and plays an important part in the threat reflex. Just like the withdrawal reflex, where you touch something hot or sharp and you withdraw to prevent injury, the threat reflex is an automatic response to fear. Because your amygdala integrates information from your memories and your five senses. What you hear, see, smell, touch and taste. And when they induce fear, so maybe you remember a traumatic event or maybe there's someone in your room, your amygdala gets activated and triggers the threat reflex. The threat reflex begins with the amygdala signaling other parts of the brain to prepare the body for action. So that's the quickening of your heart rate, rapid breathing, muscles tensing, hyperfocus, hyperawareness, and increased energy. This all happens automatically through the release of adrenaline and other hormones and processes we're not going to get into. And it's at this point that you can do one of three things. Advance, freeze, or retreat. And you do this through top-down processing. This is your prefrontal cortex. It's the part of your forebrain involved in logic, reasoning, and decision making. When something triggers a reflex, say for example someone pours acid on your hand triggering your withdrawal reflex, you can actually override pulling your hand away largely thanks to your prefrontal cortex. And you do this by telling yourself a different story, like I've always wanted a hole in my hand, or I want to see how long I can take the pain, or in this case, if I stop struggling, Brad stops the burning. This overriding of your reflexes is called top-down processing, and you can use it to also control the threat reflex and turn fear into excitement. Yes! In fact, you probably yes! unknowingly do this already. If you've ever trained for a big game, an exam, or a performance, you'd know the fear and anxiety that hits you right before the event begins. That's your threat reflex being triggered by your fear of failure, causing you to freeze or retreat. But depending on how confident you are, depending on how hard you've trained, your prefrontal cortex uses top-down processing to attach a new narrative. One that says you're ready to show what you've been training for. And just like that, you change fear into excitement. This is how fears are extinguished or created, through your brain's ability to give meaning and purpose to this otherwise unbiased feeling called the threat reflex. So I've explained how the threat reflex works and how to use top-down processing to override fear. What I haven't told you is how fear can be conditioned into trauma which is basically long-lasting fear that gets embedded in your memory. But first, I need to tell you about Pavlov's dog. Ivan Pavlov was a Russian scientist whose famous experiment involved pairing the ringing of a bell with the presentation of food to his dog. What Pavlov discovered was that with enough repetition, the dog would eventually be conditioned to expect food and start salivating every time the bell was rung, even when no food was given. This is called classical conditioning and is one of the ways that fear gets embedded in your memory. From the build-up of similar fearful events occurring over time, so much so that it turns into trauma. For example, if you kept getting hit in the head by soccer balls, you'd eventually develop a fear of projectiles hitting your head. The same goes for multiple bad relationships that lead to a fear of commitment, or constant failures that lead to a fear of trying new things. That is what's called classical conditioning. But there's also another way in which trauma gets embedded with a single extremely fear-inducing event called one-trial learning. That's why almost drowning can lead to an immediate and long-lasting fear of water. This fear conditioning is what's referred to as post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD. 
But in the same way that you can train your fears, you can also untrain them. First, you need to reduce the potency of the trauma by revisiting the experience like they do in therapy, either by retelling or journaling the experience in full, rich detail, so much so that it feels like you're actually there, and do as many sessions as it takes until there's minimal fear. Think of it as watching the same horror movie over and over, until it's just silly, or boring, or whatever doesn't trigger an extreme threat response. Once the fear is mostly gone, you'll be able, but more importantly need, to experience the traumatic event again, except this time you need to make it a positive outcome. In doing so, your dopamine system lights up, which basically motivates you to keep pushing forward, and then rewards you with feelings of pleasure and satisfaction for simply trying. That's why some people love watching horror movies or other thrill-seeking behavior. Their relationship with the threat reflex more often than not triggers the dopamine system and causes them to advance when others retreat. 